I'm sure that you had some sessions on language, language and identity, language and society, language and culture, and other aspects. Four topics to be discussed today. Language loss, language shift, language depth, and finally, language maintenance. Language, of course, is the most important tool for a culture, for a nation, and indeed for human beings. And you can say that language is also the most powerful tool of your culture. Because when you lose your culture, it means that you have lost your language. Or I can say it in just the opposite way. If you lose a language, you lose your culture. So language itself is a culture. So losing a language means losing a culture, losing a nation, losing your own identity. Because whatever language you are speaking in, that language carries your identity, identity of you or yourself as a social being, your belonging to a particular society or nation. That is why language loss and language maintenance are two important aspects of social linguistics. And language loss and language maintenance, including language depth and shift, are very common phenomena in our society from the time immemorial. There have been many languages which we do not find the existence of them anymore. And the languages that we use now might lose its prestige, even might lose its existence in the future. So let us talk about them in detail one by one. The world's languages are dying out. In America, for example, 165 Native American languages are still spoken. Out of these 165 Native American languages, 74 are almost extinct. That is, there are only a handful of elderly speakers. And for each of them, only a handful of elderly speakers are there. And after the death of these elderly speakers, there'll be no people or person speaking in those languages. Another 58 languages are there, which have fewer than 1,000 speakers, which amounts to 35% of the whole number, total number of languages. Again, there are 225 languages, which have, say, around 1,000 to 10,000 speakers. Another 5% of the 165 languages or eight languages have 10,000 plus speakers. When these elderly speakers will die, or for a number of reasons, the people will lose their interest in speaking in these languages, these languages will die out. We had a very rich language in this subcontinent, the Deshani school. And now, we can say that nobody is speaking in Sanskrit except some academic uh, sector. Like there are some departments where Sanskrit is taught, but it is not used for communication anymore. So we can say that this is an extinct language. There are different levels of language loss. Like some languages are potentially endangered. Some of them are endangered the next level is seriously endangered. Next level is moribund. And the final level of language loss is extinct. So let us talk about different aspects of these levels of language loss. Potentially endangered languages, which are socially and economically disadvantaged. And if a language is socially and economically disadvantaged, people will very soon 
lose their interest in using that language. So these languages are potentially endangered. They are not endangered, but there are potentials, probability that people will lessen their interest in speaking in that language. And as a result, that language might be endangered very soon. So there is high possibility of that language to be endangered. And this is the first state of language loss or language extinction. If there is any heavy pressure from a larger language, for example, if there are two languages used side by side in a country or in a society, and one of them is politically, economically, and socially powerful. So the less powerful language of the less powerful people receives some pressure from the larger language. As a result, that language has the potential to be endangered someday or very soon. The languages which have started to lose child speakers, if there are speakers, adult speakers of a language only, and the next generation of the children do not learn or are not taught the language, your language is going to be endangered. So if you find that there is less interest amongst the children in learning a particular language, you can feel that that language is has possibility to be endangered. Endangered languages. The languages which have only a few or no children learning the language or that lang those languages, those languages are called endangered languages. So there are very few or no children learning the languages. It is not about the speakers or users, rather the children are not learning the language or very few children are learning the language. The youngest good speakers are young adults. The best speakers of that language are some young adults, not children. So that is, there will be no more children learning that language. And after the death of these young adults, say some 40 to 50 years after, no children or no people will have the language. That is why they are called endangered languages. The next three levels, seriously endangered, moribund and extinct, these three levels are called the levels toward extinction. So the first of them is seriously endangered. The youngest good speakers is 50 or older. So try to understand the difference between endangered language and then a seriously endangered language. If there are some speakers of a language who are adult, not children, we call it a, an endangered language. But if the speakers of a language are aged 50 or more. That language is called a seriously endangered language because these speakers having the language or speaking the, or using the language who are 50 or older, they will die say in 10 to 20 years. And of course, no children have been taught you know, that language, and after 10 to 20 years, that language are sure to be extinct. Next level of toward extinction level is moribund, about to die. Moribund means about to be extinct. If a language has only a handful of good speakers, very few, handful who 
you know, you can count their numbers. That language is called a moribund language. And finally, if all the speakers have died or nobody speaks in that language, we call this language an extinct language. So what are the factors behind language loss? There are a number of factors which lead a language to loss or language loss. Some of the important ones are death of speakers, social reason, cultural reason, economic reason, and political reason. But there can be some more, but they can be classified into these five basic factors or causes leading to language loss. Death of speakers. For many reasons, the speakers of a language can die. For some natural disasters, like famine and drought, a whole community or speakers of a whole, say, a society, all the speakers of a society, of a community, can die. And if they die, and there is no speaker of that language, so the language becomes extinct. There may be diseases like plague and this pandemic. And because of this pandemic, or because of any pandemic, the speakers of a particular language may die. And in that case also, language loss takes place. Genocide is another possible cause of language loss in terms of death of speakers. For example, in or and in genocides, all the speakers of a language, of a society, may be killed. And it happens with the smaller communities. Next factor is social factors. We know that because of many different reasons, particularly social ones, young people are leaving their countryside and moving to the urban center. And what happens? So if all the young men from a particular community go to, it, go to town or go to urban areas, and the village is left with only some older members. And of course, in the urban center or in the town or city, these young men might not use their mother tongue because they have to communicate with other communities, other, other people speaking other languages. And as a result, even these young men, when they will marry, Maybe it, it is highly possible that the people moving from a village or a, a community to another community or another, say, city center will not marry somebody from their own community. It happens that they can, they, most of them marry uh, some uh, persons from other community. That is called intermarriage. And when, what would happen if intermarriages take place? Serious effect might take place. That is, when you and your wife or you or your husband you speak in two different languages and you know that which of your languages is poor, is disadvantaged, and you think that for better job better education, better life. You don't want your children to learn your language. As a result, your children will not learn the language and your mother tongue, first language, will lose its next generation speakers. There can be another reason or another social factor 
aging population in the community. If in a society, most of the people are old, say because of family planning, because of less uh, birth rate, lowest birth rate, the number of aged people will increase. So when these people, say in a community, most of the people are aged and their birth rate is very low, what would happen? Most of the pe aged people will die and there will be less and less number of speakers of the language. That will also affect the language and leads to language loss. Cultural factors. Cultural contact affects language attitude. Language attitude means whether you have a positive attitude or a negative attitude towards a language. If you have a positive attitude towards a language, it means that you will learn that language. But if you have a negative attitude towards a language and that affects your you know, motivation and you will not you will not want your children to learn the language. When you meet somebody from another culture, for example, you, if you go to say any English native speaking country and you have met a new culture and you see that you need to learn English for survival, or you have a very positive attitude. You think that English is a prestigious language. So you have positive attitude towards language. And you learn that language. But if you have a negative attitude, you will not learn the language. Culturally, more aggressive dominant language can leave some impact on the people of, on the user of a language. And this aggression or this dominance, cultural dominance can come or can occur for a number of reasons, like religion. Because of modern metropolitan culture, as it is very common today, that people, the young people go to the urban center and they meet the people speaking different languages, and they understand which language is more dominant and which language is not. And you try to learn the mo most dominant language. Another aspect is technology. Though there are say 5,000 languages around the, around the world, spoken around the world. But how many languages are technology friendly? How many languages are there, who is used in technology? Very few. You know that if you, if you want to, say, have a degree in technology, so you should learn the language which is used in technology or by technology. Technology uses some particular languages. So there are technologically dominant languages. So these are the cultural factors which affect language loss or language shift that you change your present language and you go for a new language. Economic factors. Economic advantage or advantages associated with dominant language. So the language which is dominant and some economic advantages are associated with it. For example, job opportunity. If you learn or if you know, if you have competence in English, there is more options in terms of getting the job. And also, if you get a job and if your competence is very good in English, you will get promoted easily. Or if your language competence is really good, you can work in a multinational company and you can earn a lot of money. And with that money, you can ac acquire a lot of material wealth, like cars and say the houses, flats, etc. Political factors. Political 
influences also work as a dominant factor in language loss or language maintenance. Conquest is another political factor. If you conquer a country, say, if a community is defeated in a war, so that community may lose its, say, advantage of using its own language. The next political factor is language policy. Following language policy, a country can go for terming the language and providing particular language, particular prestige. Like a country can make some languages official language. And when a language is considered an official language, that language is given more prestige, that language is patronized by the government, and that language is associated with getting the job, etc., etc. As a result, people will learn that language. But if that language is, if a language is not termed or declared official language, you will attach less importance to that language. Recommendations and laws. So the politically powerful people, the celebrities like poets, uh, in intellectuals, scientists, they can recommend that you should learn these and these and these languages and people will follow them. And laws, there can be some laws that you have to learn particular language. For example, our constitution is written in Bangla and English. So we feel that English is also an important language. And if in, uh, in academic sector, we have to learn English as a subject. So the laws and the court orders, verdicts are written in English as well. In Indian subcontinent or in Bangladesh, uh, Farsi was an official language. So people attached more importance to learning Farsi. So because it was an official language and the laws were written in, in uh, Farsi, people wanted to learn and study Farsi. Farsi is no more an official language, no more an academic language. Even the laws are not written in Farsi. As a result, there is no existence of, say, Farsi, except some, there are some departments in some of the universities, older universities in Bangladesh, where Farsi, there is a Farsi department where it is taught and learned as only an academic language. The next and the last political factor that I have mentioned here is assimilatory education. So when these uh, reasons take place, when there are one or more reasons for language loss, what happens? Because of these factors, political factors, economic factors, cultural factors, death related factors, because of these factors, the speakers change their language and move to another language. That is, they shift to another language. And this phenomenon is called language shift. So there are one or more reasons and because of these reasons, the speakers change their language and shift to a new language. And this shifting leads to language loss. Language shift can take place for any of the reasons that we have discussed so far. There can be two types of language shift. One is forced language shift. That you, the speakers are forced to change their language, like political reason. Or there can be voluntary, intentional, deliberate language shift. You just want to learn a language. And you feel that learning a particular language will let us more importance, more prestige. Or you just want to be a part of your target culture. And you cannot be a part of your target culture until and unless you learn that language. 
So you change voluntarily, intentionally, you change the language. So there can be forced language or there can be voluntary language. What is the type of language shift takes place? It leads to language loss. 